Welcome, everyone, to the Cosmic Hour. We've taken a little break for the summer, but we're back for Leo season. I'm Astro Chris, and I'm being joined by my host. Hi, I'm Emma with House of Vibes, and I'm excited to be back on the Cosmic Hour podcast. Yay, so we're going to get right to it because we have a lot of information and we don't want to make this too long for you. So let's start first with Leo season. This is a Leo glyph. So it looks kind of like a lion. I've always felt like it looked like a lion to me, like with its tail, etc. Um, And these are the Leo traits or characteristics of the season. So these are going to be applicable to a individual, anyone that has planets in Leo, or if you have a lot of planets in the fifth house, because that's a house that Leo rules, but also in regard to the season. So during the season, this type of time of year, we're a little bit more outgoing. We want to create more things like more experiences. Um, so we'll see all these traits kind of show up in the things that we do, like where I'm from, we like to go to the beach a lot and we play like games at the beach and things like that. So we're more energetic, more optimistic. Um, Leo generally is like a generous energy. Yeah, there is a shadow side to all the zodiac signs. And one of them being dramatic, they can also be known as drama queens. And I am a Leo rising. So yes, I can be a drama queen. I try not to be one. But, but yes, I do spice up my life with some drama sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in general, when Leo's well balanced, they're good people to be around with because they're always very playful, joyful. Um, they like to be like the center of attention, and even with Leos that don't have real strong placements, they eventually just call that attention subconsciously because that's what Leo energy is. Like an example with me. Um, I have a son in Pisces, but because my ascendant is Leo, I actually tend to talk really loud. Like when you meet me in person, I'm not a person that whispers. I don't even think I know how to whisper. So I have like a loud voice naturally. Like you've never had to tell me like, hey, <laughs> speak up. Um, I'm actually one of those people that can most most of the time speak without a mic when there's a group of people because my voice is like loud and clear so that's also a trait of leo energy like it's just like very like hey look at me like this is a king trait right so it's natural um even though my son is in pisces it's shire it's just something i had to like get used to because i naturally called attention to myself or like people would like gravitate towards me and it's all that Leo energy that I have. Now, um, Emma, did you want to add some stuff in regard to um, the traits? Yeah, I like that you said loud. It's not one of the words that you uh, that we wrote right here, but I wrote it down on my on my notes. And mm -hmm. I think it matches perfectly with, I mean, you were talking about how Leo represents a lion, right? And what does a lion do? Like it likes to roar. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I'm my I'm an Aquarius, so I'm the opposite of Leo, and my sister's a uh, a Leo, and like you said, like she, we always have game nights with friends and family, and she's the one who organizes everything, and she likes to be, um, the center of of it all. Like she's the one that gets everybody together and then leads the group, and like she's the like the MC of the night, <laughs> let's say. So yeah. Oh, I love that the MC of the night. I love that. Well, let's move on to the sun and grass Leo. So we're only going to touch base really quickly here um, because it already happened. However, one of the things that I wanted to point out is it's very important when the, we look at a sun and grass chart so we can see the season. Like we can see what's going on during that time, right? And when looking at this chart, because Leo rules the sun or vice versa, the sun and Leo, they're, you know, they go hand in hand. Um, you want to make sure that the sun is in good, in a good placement. But here, the time, especially, well, my, my, um, my time, it was Pacific Standard Time, a little bit after midnight on July 22nd, 
that the sun went into Leo, but it's in the fourth house. So it gets weakened. It's really weak in the fourth. Leo loves the fifth. It loves the ninth. It loves the first. And the fourth is not a placement that Leo um, focuses on. However, it's actually really suited for the topic we're going to be speaking about. And it makes sense that this Leo season, we're kind of revving up to a big election because the fourth house is your home country or your home. So we have the emphasis of the sun in the fourth and Venus is also there. Mercury is also there. So we have like this mini stadium of energy in the fourth and we need to talk about our home country we need to talk talk about um in general like the season right we need to bring up these pressing issues that we have because this is an election year so i was just like oh that's kind of cool yet i didn't like the fact that it was in the fourth um there's other times you know the sun's been in um like rising like there's a the ingression happens when it's rising right in the morning. That's a very strong placement for the sun or in the 10th house. It's also a very strong placement, but the sun at midnight. So changing signs at midnight is like hidden. It's underneath. It's not like seen. A lot of people were probably asleep during this time, right? Especially if this wasn't a weekend. Now I, I didn't check the, what day the 22nd fell on. It's kind of irrelevant, but if it's not the weekend, then a lot of people are also in bed. So another thing that I noticed is Venus is at 13 degrees and it's like almost right in the middle of the sign. So every 15 slash 16 degrees of every sign is a very fixed position for the planet. It wants to keep status quo. It wants to keep the energy of that season steady. So especially in the fixed signs, so we have Venus like really close to that mark, you know, a few days later, Venus hits that point. And at the same time, Venus was making a trine to the North Node in the 12th house, bringing things that we're not aware of into consciousness, into our awareness, and then also making a sextile, not, yeah, sextile to the South Node, and she's the ruler of the South Node. And now she's highlighting old ways of how we were working or how we do work. Something needs to change. There needs to be some evolution um, based on that because the South Node is all about kind of letting go of things that are not working for us. But we know like we can't all quit our jobs, right? We can't let go of our jobs. Like So this this season just kind of emphasizes how the topic of work and the labor market market for the U.S. is super important. Now, another thing that I noticed is that Venus is making a sextile to Jupiter and Jupiter is very important. So is Mars in the election chart. But Emma, do you want to talk a little bit about what happens every single time we're going to have the sun going into one of the fixed signs because there's something going on with Pluto when the sun goes into one of the fixed signs? Yeah, so every time the sun moves into one of the fixed signs, it's making a hard aspect to Pluto. And as the sun entered Leo, it made an opposition to Pluto that's in Aquarius right now. Um it the the moon is pretty close also it had just made the conjunction to pluto but it moved um i think the day before it had made the conjunction to to pluto now it moved a little bit away but yeah so we have that opposition with the sun and pluto in aquarius at zero degrees which is and, really yeah go ahead yeah which is really interesting because the sun represents the king right but pluto is the hidden power so now we see that dynamic and then the moon represents the people. So it's like the people want to take their power back. And I mean, that's been the narrative and the conversation that we've we've heard over and over. Um, I feel there. this is something to be very proud of. I think um, growing up, you know, they just kind of instilled you need to vote, you need to vote, you need to vote. Um and I have my opinions about voting. I'm not going to share them. However, I do like the fact that more people are getting involved and actually getting informed. I like to inform people. 
it's not enough to just be involved and then follow the herd because a lot of the things are going to be misconstrued or not percepted correctly correctly one of the things i want to use as an example was recently we had a law that just passed that is going to automatically enlist our 18 year old men um so instead of them en enlisting themselves because it's a legal mandate they're automatically going to get enlisted. So I was hearing a lot of information, even from my friends saying, oh my goodness, oh my God, what's going to happen? Our kids are going to have to go to war because there's a mandatory draft, so on and so forth. And then I looked into it and I said, no, what they did is they took a law already that was in place where they put the responsibility on the people, but specifically men, because men are the ones that are need, that need to do this. They need to, when they turn 18, they need to register and they need to register with the U, like a U.S. online platform, the U.S. website, and they're registering. So in case there is a mandatory enlisting, like they, in case we do need to go to war, um, it's a legal mandate. If they don't do that, they can, you know, get charged for not like, you know, following the law and the regulation. However, what the U.S., um this new law that passed in what they're trying to they were the the senate was trying to avoid is marketing being funneled to that because there was a lot of marketing hey don't forget to register don't forget to register and that cost money so what they did is they said no there needs to be an automatic registry so we're going to take the responsibility from the people to do it so from the men and we're going to do it automatically so they're going to have to create a system they haven't done it yet but they're going to create a system where they're automatically being enlisted so most likely is going to be through the educational system which makes total sense because jupiter's in gemini um but when i explained it to my friend she's like oh so there's not an automatic draft and i was like no <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. You have to inform yourself because you can misconstrue. And it might seem like that. It kind of seems like when you were like looking at the headlines, what is a ma like mandatory military, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, no. But no, if you really like look into it, get informed, you'll see that there's something else to it. And the reason why they wanted to pass that is because they no longer want to spend money advertising for something that they can just do automatic which is much easier so, something like when you go get your license at um over here we call it the dmv they ask you if you want to register for vote right so they're 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 taking instead of having um the advertisement in a tv commercial or things like that where it's costing a lot of money they're kind of putting it into government paperwork and then that's how they're saving costs to implement whatever law, which is in that case was getting more people to be registered to vote. So like I said, get informed and um, don't misconstrue things because that is what's going to um, injure or um, impact you and how you react to what's going on like it's gonna be a very crazy ride you look at uranus it's making an exact trine to the mc and we already know that uranus right now is sitting on medusa's head um al goal so it's been there for a while we had mars conjunct al goal right on that degree as well with uranus so medusa's head is seeking justice right now <laughs> um a lot it's of also people... squaring mercury right yeah the yes. Building. yes the well oh the the day of the election it's square the mercury. ingression ingression oh okay on ingress oh okay yeah i was like i didn't check because i know mercury mm -hmm. does go retro but no it's by then mercury's moved on already he's right he's done with his retro and gone forward because mercury will retro these degrees um in the O, even though we're not going to talk about Mercury <laughs> retro. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think we pretty much covered it. Yes. Awesome. So lastly, we just see this like energy here of Jupiter and Mars really focused on the second house. So our value system, right? So 
whatever we do during the season, like we have to prioritize our value system so we can make um, the best informed decision for ourselves and our beliefs. Um, nothing's ever going to be perfect, but that's how you can inform yourself because there is going to be a lot of announcing during this time. So <laughs> just, just so you know, we're, you're going to get a lot of info. It's just the season is busy that way. Now, election day, um, I wanted to just show you the charts because we're going to revisit this later, but I wanted to show the the election day chart, even though it's not Leo season, we have Mars and Leo. So Leo season pretty much is like the energy is coming back. It's like getting revived. So um, I have the election day, the start time in the inner wheel. And then we have the also the um the, the US's chart. Yeah. Exactly. The in the US chart independence. So and this is when everything closes. So the last vote comes in through Hawaii, which is actually um November the sixth at midnight Washington DC time. And that happens to be Leo rising. So you're going to see the big picture, how everything just kind of falls into place. Um, Biden. So really quickly, we just wanted to bring in information about, you know, Biden. A little bit before the sun went into Leo, he actually announced that he's stepping down. Um, Emma, did you want to start? Yeah, sure. OK, so looking at Biden's chart, he is a... Uh... He's a Sagittarius rising with a sun in Scorpio with a nice little stellium in Scorpio. He has a bunch of planets in Scorpio with a moon in Taurus. Um, and that's a lot of fixed energies. Um, and it's most, if not all, of his personal planets in, in fixed signs. Um, what's interesting about uh, his chart is when he announced that he was stepping down from the race, uh, he had Uranus. Uh, Uranus was just coming to oppose his son. I think it was off by like one degree. Like it's sitting right there in the opposition of of his son in in Scorpio. Um, but yeah, overall, um, during this Leo season, the sun is transiting his ninth house of belief sy systems, and it's actually making a square to his Scorpio sun and stellium and his moon in Taurus. And, you know, um, a square causes like it's like a point of, of stress or tension. So it's a, it is a transit of challenge where, you know, we're forced to make some certain changes or adjust adjustments to, to, to our lives. Exactly. So. This is what um what the straw that broke the camel's back. He decided that he's not going to run. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, But one of the things that I see in his chart that stands up is he has the layout of the U.S. The U.S.'s chart because the U.S. chart is Sagittarius rising. It's not the same degree, but he's a Sag rising. So he has a, the traditional signature of presidents. A lot of presidents, and I've seen a lot of charts, casted a lot of charts of presidents. They have planets in the 12th. And it's because the 12th talks about really far away places, right? And um, Things also that we we can't see, we're not aware of. Like an example, there's there's things going on in the world right now that don't impact our life like day to day. Like we go outside and we don't see that stuff. We we're seeing the local traffic around us. We're not actually witnessing all these other things that are going around the world. However, they have a different type of impact on us. Is more like a ripple effect. So they're causing things to like inflation, they're causing prices to go up, things like that. So we see that type of effect. And that's all 12th house energy is sneaky, is hidden. And a lot of presidents have planets in the 12th because they're dealing with faraway places. And they also deal with doing things um, behind the scenes, even though they'll go to like you know to the public and address the public. There is a lot of things that go on like behind the scenes that we're not aware of. 
right? So he has that signature already. And one of the things that I noticed that stood out to me the most was how the chart for the United States has a signature of Uranus and Mars in the seventh house. Biden has a signature of Uranus and Saturn in the seventh house. So um, he came in with more traditional ideas or like his, you know, his, his administration came in with more traditional ideas in, in the way that he's negotiating. Cause this is a, this is the seventh house that negotiates and partners with others. Right. So he's coming in with these like new traditional, I, n not new traditional ideas that he's then trying to innovate. However, the, U.S. chart doesn't carry that signature. It wants to really enforce because it has the anarchist <laughs> aspect, which is Uranus and Mars conjunct. So it doesn't want to um, deal with traditional. Mars is enemy of Saturn. Saturn gets along with Mars, but Mars does not get along with almost anyone, actually. It only gets along with the sun. <laughs> But Mars causes a lot of damage. So we have, as a nation, we have the the signature of, you know, going out and causing a little bit of trouble. But yet we have humanitarian causes because Uranus is all about um, helping others. And then that's another thing too, a thing too that we do. We we assist with when pe people um, get impacted by weather, et cetera. So you see that like his signature is a little bit different, even though he has a real strong Mars, it, the Mars operational works differently. And that's the thing that I saw like, oh, first, I mean, his health, you can, you can see he's older, you can see that was going to impact him. However, for me, it was like, I don't see this happening twice because the U.S. screams for new things, like new revolutions when it comes to the way that we are as a nation. And this is so traditional. I don't know if you have any opinion on that. No, I agree with with what you said. Um, and what you said about the U.S. always being like tr having that humanitarian um, act to helping other nations, like whenever something goes goes wrong or something happens to another nation like the u.s the u.s is usually the first one they are wanting to help but also meddling in other countries affairs also all the exactly. time <laughs> you know, so exactly so you see that with that signature of of mars mars yeah. <laughs> mars and uranus yeah okay so let's move on um to now uh, I don't want to label him the star of the show, but because <laughs> he has a Leo rising, technically, whenever you have the sun transiting your first house, you're kind of like the star of the show. So, um, I mean, he's he's everything we talked about, right? Like, in, he's dramatic, he's boisterous, he's loud, loud, very loud <laughs> opinionated. Um, I don't know if he's a well balanced Leo, but I I mean I can't blame him. Look at his Mars. Mars, Mars is like yeah. right on the ascendant. So <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> Even if he wants to be um a little bit more reserved. Uh he can not. because he was also he was also born under a full moon eclipse with Uranus conjunct his son. So exactly. So it's it, it, it there's no way for him to be reserved. <laughs> or tamed <laughs> exactly um he is i think out of uh all our all of our presidents i'm for sure so far i can guarantee that he's been one of the most eccentric presidents that we've had um mm -hmm. and you can really see it in his chart i mean even then the way that he came about um you know winning his election back then it was kind of shocking to the nation because we have a person that really doesn't have a lot of history in politics. Like he didn't go the traditional, um, again, traditional, right? He didn't go that route. Where does it, where is this Mars? His Mars, not his Mars, his Saturn. His Saturn's in the 12th house. That's traditional, right? He didn't go that way. Like he's like, nope. He really utilized his 
sun uranus conjunction and kind of shocked people <laughs> like <laughs> i'm running and he won and you know he had luck with it because look at the trying to jupiter <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um and then jupiter is the ruler of his moon but then there's also once he came into play, like, you know, in presidency, he also very like he really divided the people because you either really love him or you really hate him. There's almost nothing in between. Like, honestly, everyone that I've come across and, and you know, yes, uh, politics and religion are very sensitive things to talk about. But whoever wants to talk about it, they are either going to love this guy or they're just going to hate him. And you can see that, too, with the, the the nodes. The nodes cause that division, right? That like, like we have we have to like pull it apart. And he was born during a lunar eclipse. So now you have the sun that's working one agenda and then you have the moon working another agenda so it's the government working another one agenda because that's the sun and then the people which is represented by the moon another so um it causes a division yet a lot of these um presidents people that run for presidency they usually have the sun and the moon working either in opposition or in a good harmonious way because they care about the people somehow they're going into this position because they care somehow they care either about how the people are going to make them um more money <laughs> or how the people are going to help them run the help them run the nation more right but they care there's something about i'm not saying they're going to be caring for the people look out for the people all the time it's more like they have an agenda of how they want the people to react during their um like their presidency so you also see that mars has a trying to his moon and his ascendant so again that's another signature of like that love hate relationship he can have with the people because mars i mean he can be a little bit pushy right so then you have those people that like that like that bluntness like that honesty um even though i don't think everyone's 100 percent honest but um the things that he says i'm like he could really have he has the money to have someone ghost write his stuff and not say it but he chooses not to he's like i'm just gonna say it and blah 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 so he's like raw blunt like matter of fact um and then there's the people that don't appreciate that right because you also see mars squaring the midheaven so um it doesn't like necessarily play really well and the people in conjunct his midheaven as well so anything you want to point out about his chart um i think you covered pretty much it in terms of his natal chart so let's go to this one right here. Right. So in the in the real, like the inner, the, the first circle, we have his natal chart. And then the outer circle, we have the election day chart. And I have this based on when the election starts. And then from Washington, D.C. And then the outer circle is um, Independence Day, July 4th which is our nation's chart. Yeah, when I look at this, two things um, that pop out right away for me is Uranus on his MC that's been there and it's going to be there until election and Jupiter conjunct his north node in, in Gemini. Yes. And, and it's also with the US is um, the Independence Day is Mars. So... <laughs> Yes, uh, I really think that this is a real strong signature that he has right here. Uh, I think that's like the strongest aspects that uh, that are at play um, with that J Jupiter conjunct his north node and not just his north node. We can say it's conjunct awesome. his Uranus, his sun, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and the same thing with the nation, the nation. So the, the nation itself carries the signature of um, Uranus, right? Like it has the Uranus Mars conjunction and he has Uranus in Gemini. So he already carries like one vibration of the nation. And then from there, we want to look at Mars. So we want to see, okay, where is Mars? 
But when we look at the nation's um, Mars, the the energy, we, hold on, I'm actually looking at the election because it's falling in his first. So where's the nation's Mars? Oh, yeah, there we go. The nation's Mars, it's right on his sun. So when we look at his, his Mars, the same thing, it's making an aspect to the nation's Mars. So it's actually working harmoniously. So, and it's at the same time, it's working harmoniously with the Uranus placement. So even though he doesn't have Mars in Mars conjunct Uranus in his chart, he has Mars sextile Uranus. So it's part of that cycle of like changing things, being more um, eccentric in the way that he conquers, you know, I mean, he's done the out of all the presidents, I think he's the most different. All of, all of them come from like political families or political backgrounds. I, I think he's the only one that has been elected as a president that does not come from that. Right. Um, but yes, he does come from wealth. We know that, but not like political. Yeah, he also didn't have a traditional like um, senator or congressman route or even lawyer that most presidents you know, the path that they take before they, they run for president. Exactly. So it's very true to his nature. So we see Uranus strong on his MC. We see the Uranus signature matching. And then we want to look at the nation's energy in cancer. And he has placements in cancer. His Mercury is conjunct Venus and Jupiter conjunction. And and also the sun. It's really close to the, the nation's sun. Um the nation also has Mercury in Cancer, just like he does. And the nation's Mercury is conjunct his Saturn, Venus conjunction. And I think this is where we see, because the, the nation's Mercury is retro. This is where we see, like, the other thing, like, is does the nation really love him or hate him? Yeah. It's the communication, right? It's the, it's the Saturn, it's the stuff that he says. Like he says certain things and then like the nation's like, what? <laughs> but there's other people that do, you know, they 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 resonate with what he's saying. So because they're more traditional or they have like, you know, they have like this traditional view of how the nation should be. Um, it's more business oriented because Saturn is all it's a natural ruler of the 10th house. And even in his chart, Venus rules his 10th house. So. The ruler of the 10th is with Saturn and Saturn is in the house of joy in his chart. So it actually works really well hidden there. And again, he doesn't have the traditional placements that we always see like the moon or the sun in the 12th for a lot of the presidents, but he has a lot of planets there too. So you see that energy of like the 12th house being highlighted. And one of the things I wanted to mention is you know, and it's said everywhere, the social media, you're going to hear all sorts of stuff, right? In the media, everywhere, news outlets. And one of them being that he had these relationships. And actually, he's even said it out of his own um, mouth that he's had great relationship with people that uh, other presidents that want to terrorize our nation. And you can see, you can see that because his communication in the 12th and that's far away places and it's cancer energy. So he's like able to like, in a way, mother the relationship, right? Like nurture it somehow still traditional. Most likely there's some business exchanges because you see Saturn there with Venus and Venus means business. So I'm not saying that there's no like, like uh, negotiation, but, he just has the skill to handle these people and he said it over and over um, versus other administrations might have taken things differently and struggled differently. I mean, I know what I remember when he was in president, we didn't have a lot of the conversations like, like, Oh, this is going to happen. Ah, you know, like I don't even want to talk about <laughs> because they're all like, they're not going to happen. So I don't want to say things that, um, I know are not going to happen. Um, like no one's going to attack us or things like that, but we've had that in the media, like over and over. And when he was in presidency, we weren't hearing it as much. It was more after 
like because he kind of got it out of control okay when in the media he's like no 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 everything's fine and then all of a sudden they're bffs so <laughs> so <laughs> it's just strange um so yeah let's see yeah. What, what else do we notice on the election day it's making a trying to um scorpio sun is making a trying to um all his planets in cancer yeah and his his natal um um no i'm sorry not the natal the election date saturn is also making a trine so he kind of forms you know a, a trine there uh the nation's moon is conjunct his part of fortune but he does have the south node um the nation's south node in the seventh house so you can also see there how he kind of struggles to partner partner with people and i really feel that's why they struggle with him because he just brings very radical um opinions and he he's coming from a business perspective versus we have like the majority of the people in politics you know they've been in politics like they they went through that route like they climbed the ladder like like emma was saying and he is he's having like issues navigating that because he's like there's a bunch of red tape <laughs> and he sees things differently because he's never done the political route he is a natural businessman that's what he does like that's what he's done so he wants to do things in a different way, not knowing that's not the way this world works. So he went into a different world and you can see that with the South Node in the seventh where, you know, he ends up struggling, you know, to keep that because he didn't get reelected. He only ran one term and then, you know, now we're here. So now that's why he's able to run another term. Anything you want to add? Uh, I think we pretty much covered it with him okay. um, it's, it's gonna be interesting to 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 watch how it develops honestly yeah yeah let's see and even with um Kamala's chart I'm interested to see on how she develops because both her yeah. and Trump have some placements that kind of activate each other right like support each other so this is her natal chart um what what I noticed is that Mars, it, she has Mars in Leo, and this is actually sextile to the nation's Gemini Uranus conjunction that we have in you know the, the seventh. So you see Mars getting along, her Mars getting along with that Gemini Uranus conjunction that we have, and she already is um, a Gemini rising. So it kind of falls into her first, but then that can also be why um, even in popular, you know, popular polls and things that are out there, we're getting a lot of mixed, um, like a lot of mixed opinions on if she's going to be the president or does the, do the people want her to be the president, et cetera. And you see that, that Gemini Uranus conjunction that ends up then falling in her first house, how that kind of gets mm -hmm. in the way. But you, I mean, this time around with the election, uh, Jupiter will be kind of mitigating it, like helping it a little because it's there. Um, but yeah, I think this is what hurts her, the Uranus Mars that, the, that goes and attacks her um, first house. So she was able to come in as vice president, but this term I didn't I didn't end up checking. Um, I had to check then, but not now. How it looked the first time she ran, right? But now definitely Jupiter was not in Gemini because that was four years ago. So now Jupiter being in her first house, maybe this helps, like the perception of the people, because the seventh is the people. So yeah yeah um and right now she's gonna have the sun transiting her third so she's highlighting what her, right her communication and um she also has mars there 
yeah. so that's we're, we're, I think we're gonna see um a little bit more of her and we're gonna hear her um you know express herself a little bit more because honestly even as vice president I haven't heard much from her it's kind of like she's either been upset or behind the scenes yeah yeah I mean we usually don't hear much about the vi vice president I feel like mm -hmm. the um but the way that her Mars, I'm sure that she's been doing a lot of things behind the scenes. First, all her or her son and all that stuff is kind of falling, falling like underneath. And even though she's not a Le like Leo son, she has a Libra son in the fifth house. So it's a Leo house. So she still carries like a Leo type of energy with her son, even though it's a Libra son. And it makes a sextile to Mars. And it's interesting to see that Mars makes a sextile also to her ascendant. And it's almost exact. And then her son, Mercury, make a trine to her ascendant. And Mercury is a ruler of her chart. So she really, she really did benefit from partnership. And, you know, partnering with Biden was really good for her because she she's a Libra son. Um, and that Mars kind of like helps, you know, she knows she, what she's doing. Um, she it, it, And it also trines her moon. So you see all the luminaries, like the sun, the moon and the ascendant being helped by Mars. So Leo season is going to be big for her. I think we're going to see her more outspoken, more aggressive. We're going to see a side of her that we haven't seen before. That is going to be quite interesting. Like it's going to show us, you know, a show. And she's already been endorsed, right, by the Democratic Party. So they're they're pretty much giving her the thumbs up. Like, hey, we want you to run. So she already has a backing. Um, so endorsement is important because they need funding so they can start outreaching and things like that. So she has that already. Um so let's see what happens. One of the other things that I noticed too is Saturn right on her midheaven. So she it's really strong. Um, even though her midheaven goes into the sign of your like Aquarius, I mean, it's in the ninth house. Um, and Saturn is there too. Saturn actually rules traditional ruler of Aquarius. There's something that this Saturn does to her, to the nation's moon. I don't think this is beneficial. I've heard in, from others posting, oh, you know, her moon's going into Saturn. Maybe that means more responsibilities and, you know, stepping into power and blah, blah, blah. I really feel if the moon represents the people and her Saturn is there, um, I feel like some people are going to feel restricted by the things or her agenda or things like that. And then there's some people that are going to gravitate to that because they want that old traditional innovative way um, of doing things. So she does carry some type of Uranus type of energy, but it's much less. Like it's not as strong as a Mars Uranus um, conjunction that the nation has. But his, her, the way that she sees government is outside of the box. Plus, she's one of the younger candidates, too. I mean, you could tell in her. Yeah. Opinion. So that it, it's quite interesting. I, I'm I'm waiting to see what happens. Um, the, I, the, the South Node also just like released her son and her Mercury. Because there was a transit to them. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say she's probably one of the few candidates that don't have uh, uh, their Pluto in, that, that that are not from the Pluto and Leo uh, generation. I think yeah, if we didn't check the rest of them, but she's the only one that has Pluto. at least the main ones that are always talked about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the Pluto and Leo generation, this is their last hurrah. They're having their opposition. They're getting older. You know, yeah. um, and Pluto's going to call them to innovate. Um, what she's having or what she has been having is the Neptune opposition to all her planets. Um, but that's and her Saturn, planet. Saturn also. 
Yeah, and Saturn opposition. Yet also Saturn is making a conjunction. The nation's Saturn makes a conjunction to her son, which this could be quite positive. So when it comes to the government, the government can see it very positive because the sun represents the government. Um, but from the moon's perspective, there's something going on. I'm not like 100% convinced with this, honestly. Um, each to each their own, their opinion. But I, I feel like the the greater scope, there's something going on with that moon placement and, and her natal Saturn. Um, but... I mean, nothing could ever be perfect, right? We're going to have right. some challenging aspects and we're going to have some good aspects. Um, the election day, uh, sun falls in her sixth house and it's also really close to Neptune, her natal Neptune. So that's quite interesting. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't heard much of what she's been saying or talking, but um, I'm wondering if she's like pivoting on... Um, really focusing on the nation's the na the nation's debt because all the like in her chart all the nation's planets are falling in her second house so I, i'm i'm just interesting to interested to see what she says i my opinion about who's president it doesn't matter <laughs> i'm just here to kind of deliver the information that i see and i like to listen to everyone to see what they're saying and then also i go and then compare it to the astrology so that's what i do and i'm like oh okay this is a strategy that they're using and i'm pretty sure they're using astrologers psychics <laughs> other type of healers to assist them with their campaign so it's just very interesting to see because you can see it and the stuff that they say and how they say it, you're going to see the energy of their chart just come out and it's all interacting with the nation's chart too. Now, is there anything else we want to touch base or talk about? With her? Um, no, I think we pretty much um, covered any, everything. Uh, she also just came out of, uh, she just had her Jupiter return Um a few earlier this year and right now she has uranus um sitting exactly on her jupiter also yes and, and jupiter that, rules her moon yeah and that jupiter um not not jupiter um uranus mars conjunction happened yeah yeah right on her jupiter and actually when jupiter and uranus met up they happened right on her jupiter too the jupiter uranus conjunction that we right just yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It just happened on that. Um, I think the last thing I wanted to mention, and I can't, I can't believe I forgot it. it it's her moon placement. The moon, um, conjunct the south node, and on the day of the election, we have the moon conjunct that south node, her natal south node. She ends up having a lunar return that day. Um, but Venus is also very close to that point. So the this is big too because the nation is Sagittarius rising, right? So this is the nation's rising right here. So we see some something big in regard to women and the people. So they're showing us, uh, and the energy of Sagittarius is very optimistic. It's to like be optimistic, to share and preach and teach. And with Venus and, I'm sorry, I need to cough. Ooh. I apologize for that. For Venus and the moon to get together, this is usually a like lucky omen. And when this is happening, we're going to see Venus and the moon shine brightly in the sky, like as it's setting. Um, well, from the perspective of her chart, um, th this is actually happening in the morning, but um, as it like it, as it's setting from her chart, we have venus and the moon conjunct which is really auspicious for women so it can be something that assists her the only thing that does not have me convinced is the south node because the south node is about letting go of things so i don't know are we ready to have a woman president i mean i would love to have a woman president i really don't care who the woman is um i have no opinion in that but as a woman and 
um, someone that was born here, that was one of the dreams, right? To like live, I want to live through, I want to witness um, a woman president. Yeah, I do. Whether it's now or later, I want to witness it. So um, I think it's like a good step towards women. I mean, we just witnessed a woman being vice president. So she was she was actually the first. So is she also going to be the first president, the first woman president? You know, I'm not totally convinced with that South Node, but she does have that like nice Venus moon conjunction there. And it's in the first house of the nation. So it flavors everything much different than what we see here, right? Like her ascendant and the nation's Mars and Uranus. Like this kind of helps, it's helping mitigate that energy and then mars is also making an exact opposition to venus you know they're the cosmic lovers so they're not trying to make love that day but they're at least trying to like get along <laughs> all right like okay let's talk about this so i don't know let's see what happens um next chart is mr robert um f kennedy want to take it away Yes. Okay. So this guy is running as an independent candidate. Um, he is a Capricorn sun. He has a little stellium in Capricorn, actually he has the North Node, Venus, the Sun, Mercury, and even Chiron in Capricorn. He is also a Leo rising, um, which means that he right now this Leo season is, you know, it's going to be transit his first house so the 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 focus or the light that is, is gonna be the focus is gonna be on on him he has a cancer moon which is uh, exactly where the nation's uh sun sits at at 13 degrees of of cancer right yes yeah um and what else do I notice about his chart? He has um he doesn't have the Saturn Uranus uh, I'm sorry Mars Uranus uh conjunction that we've been talking about, but he has Saturn Uranus I'm sorry Saturn Mars conjunct in Scorpio in his fourth house, um and they are making a a trine to his Uranus, and his Uranus is actually conjunct his Moon, and he's also there with the South Node in the twelfth house of you know, what we were explaining earlier of like things being hidden um, behind the scenes. Um, so he has that signature of the 12th house also. Yeah, the, um, the president house. Right. Um, One thing also about him is that Pluto has been opposing his rising for this during this year, but during the night of the election, I think it goes back into Capricorn. It's it's actually been going back and forth between his sun and Mercury for the past two years. Um, and during the election, Pluto will be back in Capricorn. So I don't know much about this guy as a as a political candidate, but I know over the past couple of years, he's been a little bit more vocal or expressive about his his ideas, his opinions, his views. I, I even think he wrote a book. Um, I don't know much about it, but I had seen some stuff around that. So I don't know. Um, it's interesting to, interesting to see. This is actually, I know every year we have, we always have a uh, independent candidate, but this is the first time that, you know, someone is, being talked about a little bit more uh than the because i remember the last the last election and the ones before that we never i never knew who the independent candidates were yeah yeah well i mean it's he also comes from the kennedys right it's a kennedy right bloodline so um th that's where you see the leo energy and and pluto with the power so it comes from a family of power so that's probably why we we're hearing a little bit more about this party because he already has that, you know, family fame. Um, but yeah, he still carries that signature yet with a tad bit of tradition because he has his Mars trining his Uranus. 
So he's from that same cycle. Eventually, Mars and Uranus, before this trine happened, so while well, he probably, before he was born, right, he was um, in the womb, um, Uranus and Mars made a conjunction. And then, then Mars moves away from Uranus. So at this point, when he was born, Mars had, had already made his way to Scorpio. So it's actually in the same cycle. It's playing nicely. It's a trine. And then it falls in the fourth house. So, which is also very, that's cancer house. So it's very, you know, uh, indicative of, and the moon's making a, the moon makes a trine to Mars too. So it's very indicative about the people, like wanting to change things for the people, like maybe change traditions, but yet keep things traditional, at the same time, just that not too much radical change, but I think um, the like like even the party that he declared because I think most of, most of his family was democratic, right? So what he declared is, "Hey, I'm independent," and that's <laughs> Uranus. Uranus is like saying, "No, you're not gonna be declaring yourself the same as your family." Like, and you can see that with the moon. Now, he hasn't had a lot of traction, um, but I really, I found that interesting that he has the moon exactly where our sun's nation is. Um, and he's also going to be having a Jupiter return around the time mm -hmm. that the election happens. So let's go to that chart. Um, so... If we look at Jupiter, it's at 20 degrees and his natal Jupiter is at 17. And Mars is also going to be triggering that. So it's interesting to see, to see that. And all these planets then are interacting with this. And another thing too, he was also born on, he doesn't just have a full moon in his chart. He was also born during an eclipse. Right. It's a lunar eclipse. So yeah. I, I was just like, wow, okay. We're getting, and you know, and I, I, we didn't mention that with Kamala's chart, but let's go back to hers. She was also born during a full moon. Now she is not, not, not a full moon. Um, um, no, 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 it's not her chart. Sorry, it's not Kamala's chart. It's the next chart that we're going to talk about. But she has a moon working well with her son. But yeah, I retract that. I, the next chart that I bring up, you're going to see, and I, I, I noticed that, and I was like, wow, what is it with these full moon people? Like running for presidency. Um, so let me see anything. Biden else. too. Yeah, exactly. That's who it was. That's what it was. It was Biden. I was just like, wait a minute. Um, and I said I, I was thinking I flipped them, but it was Biden. There we go. Biden with a full moon. So we have Biden with a full moon, which is you know, with Kamala's administration, and we have Trump <laughs> with a full moon. Um and now we have um, Robert with a full moon. So, uh, and, and he has an eclipse on top of it. Um, Biden didn't. So just found that relationship with the sun and the moon interesting to like kind of look at. And then lastly, one of the things that I wanted to bring up is we had an eclipse. And this is why this, this his chart is like so significant with the, with already having an eclipse in his chart we had an eclipse at 19 degrees of aries and that's where his midheaven is at so this year the solar eclipse that happened in aries triggered his mc so i don't know if that also caused a lot of traction because like emma was saying like hey other times we don't really hear about this party like we don't mm -hmm. really know about who's running so it could show up through that activation and Mars ran through there. So this point, this 19 degree point, Emma and I did a other podcasts where we talked about Aries 19 degree being triggered like a lot over of times over, yeah. Yes, yeah, over and over by different planets. So that means his MC kept on getting triggered. It was by Venus, by the sun, by, by Mars, by Mercury. I think all those planets went through it. So um, you know, he might have raised a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably why we're hearing him more, right? Because he's using his money to outreach and for people to say, Hey, I'm here. Um, look at me. 
So that was interesting to see that he's part of that too. Like, so who knows what happens with with him? He hasn't yet declared he's dropping out. Um, but he's also gonna have Mars transiting his first, and on the day of the election, his Mars is like almost right on his ascendant, but it triggers the nation's um north node that Mars uh, uh, Leo energy is like right on the nation's north node. So yeah, that that's that was something interesting to see. Okay, anything else that we want to add? Um I no, I think that's pretty much it also. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then um this other candidate was well, she doesn't have a lot of traction. <laughs> But I wanted to add her because she does have the full moon. <laughs> yes, she has a full moon. Um, she was born a little bit after full moon. So everyone here other than Kabbalah has a full <laughs> moon. Very, very interesting. Um, and then the nodes are their their nodes are also very highly involved. Like they have planets on the nodes things like that and remember the nodes are your karmic points like with her look at her she has her south node conjunct to pluto so this just shows that she's been in past lifetimes a leader she's been in government in power right because back then that's what was power government was power so she's been through it maybe this is why she's decided to run because she also does not have a traditional route just like donald didn't have a traditional route so her name is marianne williamson and she's actually one of my teachers how is she my teacher i read almost all of her books so she um writes about spirituality i've also took a, a handful of her courses so when I saw in 2020 that she ran, she shortly dropped out of the race. Um, I discovered a book that she was that she had just written, and it's called A Politics of Love. So I recommend everyone to read that book because she really brings a lot of awareness on how the nation should be ran, but also is bringing in her spirituality because she's a spiritual teacher. She is into astrology. She is into psychic abilities. She teaches stuff like this. She doesn't necessarily teach astrology, but trust me, she's into it because she's referenced, you know, oh, the full moon and this and that. But that maybe that's not her spiritual expertise, but she does have a connection. So I, I honestly got super excited when I saw her her again running because even though I don't think she has a winning chance she's actually really good for the nation and even her book the way the things that she talks about um they're really good for the nation really good for the people in general and that's one of the things that she says like I know I have very slim chances of winning but I want to put my message out there and I feel like the spiritual community is very strong and we're getting stronger before it felt like we couldn't talk about this stuff that we were into the, these things because we're going to get a pebble thrown at us or <laughs> we're going to get worse, <laughs> right? We're going to get lynched or hung or whatever. Now, outcasted. <laughs> exactly. Outcasted. Now, I think we still kind of feel that a little bit, but not to the point that we're scared for our life. It's more like, oh, people are going to talk about us, right? But it's not like life threatening where, you know, they're going to do something life threatening. And to see her step a step up and be in the limelight and she can't hide her past. It's not like if she's trying to hide it and say, oh, no, I'm not a spiritual teacher. No, she's honoring it. Um, but she does not have the traditional route. She does. She was not a politician. You know, she wasn't also like a big celebrity like Donald where he went on to. She didn't go on to like popular tv and you know um i forget what the show that donald came out on but whatever like she but she's well known in the spiritual community so i actually love the fact that she is running and what her message is um she's also declared herself as democratic but she has not gotten the the um endorsement because they gave they just gave that to kamala 
So she doesn't she doesn't have that backing, but um everything that she says in her book, I mean, you guys have to read it. Her book is really interesting and really eye-opening. And of course, she has her spiritual flair to it. But other things that you can see in her chart, I mean, she's already a cancer. She has her Venus in cancer. And her book is called A Politics of Love. So, you know, you see that Venus shine through. Mm -hmm. And it's also, she also carries that signature. I mean, Donald Trump had that, the sun and Uranus. So right. it's like Uranus is really involved. It's like we need to change the old. We need to change it, change it. So, you know, that she brings her sun in into the mix. Um, she has her part of fortune right on the nations. Let's go to the next one. She has her part of fortune right on the nation's ascendant. See, 11 degrees, 12 degrees. And this is where Archangel uh, Uriel sits. Um, also, his name is um, a.k.a. Antares. So it's it's a very auspicious point. And she has her part of fortune there so it's like she would be good for the nation um it's just showing that like her part of fortune she'll bring fortune to the nation um let me see what else we notice um obviously the election trines all her cancer stuff and we already it's it out yeah mm -hmm. it's really interesting that every well most of the candidates that we, well every candidate that we talked about in this podcast has some activation um with with Jupiter and the Mars um the 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 US is Mars yes and she has it even stronger cuz even though uh, uh Kamala she's a Gemini um it's not at that exact that exact degree right and she has it at 23 like right on the um nation's Mars and then right where Jupiter is at exactly. so yeah that I know all of them have that like so it's like you can't like really see clearly like who's gonna mm -hmm. win because and Jupiter then, supporting everyone <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and it's kind of like I mean they all work as a team right it's it, right. it becomes a team election because even though they're they're they have their own agenda the campaign itself has everyone's energy and you know we've done these composite charts that have like 10 or more charts and then we find the neutral energy between all of them so they all are working together and i mean they kind of push each other because we are only left with a few options you either vote for this or this so eventually you know we have to make that choice or you don't vote at all which i really think you have to exercise um your rights if you really feel like you're making a difference and go ahead and do it now if you don't feel like voting then go ahead and do that I really feel like you should just be informed. Um, but it, you know, it is it is nice to know what's going on and be informed. And no party is ever going to satisfy all your beliefs. Let me tell you that much. Um, I don't think there's been a single presidency that I can say oh that was the most amazing presidency there was always something wrong with it like something's always been wrong but then there's also good things about it too so we just have to be informed and, and you know and, and be ready because no matter what whoever wins we're still Americans so <laughs> <laughs> like no. no matter what we're still gonna have to live here so we're just gonna have to deal with it and that's why you want to be informed and you know what's the plan in in general like what's going on like if this this party wins or that party wins you're kind of a little bit aware of what the next four years hold whether it's the party you were going for or not um she has her moon in capricorn conjunct the nation's pluto and at this point by election like how you had mentioned earlier it's already at 29 degrees in pluto which I found that interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's it. This is this is the last hurrah for Pluto and Capricorn. <laughs> We're done from this point. After yeah. that, it goes back into Aquarius. Full time. Yeah. Her north node falls right on the nation's moon. So now we have yeah. a different energy. Right. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. Yeah, and I I kind of like that. But like, 
how you were saying earlier how you like her for the country that she could be good for the country with that north node moon aspect i was like yeah especially in aquarius where you know aquarius is more of that like you know stepping into the future and doing things differently exactly what we need right now but yeah and that's actually everything her book like what she wrote about is the things we need to be aware of and how we should do things differently it's it's super interesting um, i'm gonna get the book yeah it's super interesting she also doesn't have the uranus mars conjunction but she carries a signature because she has uranus mars in trine so she's still yeah. part of that same cycle and then she has Jupiter in the 12th. So again, a placement in the 12th house. But Jupiter is very nice. So that means, you know, with the nations outside, like it's Jupiter energy and it's Taurus. So it's going to be able to negotiate well. Like her, if she was, but honestly, she's not going to. It's She's not going to be it. <laughs> but <laughs> what I do like is, like she's stepping up to the plate and she has that agenda of like, I'm going to make people aware of what my principles are. And I think she's doing it because she feels this big calling from this Pluto in the South Node. Remember Pluto, the South Node conjunct anything talks about things that we mastered in past lifetimes. And then you see this other um, node conjunct the the moon and she's really said it i want to educate the people so she's fulfilling one her of purpose. her yes mm -hmm. yes yes so i'm i'm like all oh, like even <laughs> when I, i'm like more in awe about what she's done and what she's doing because of how she's spreading the message and she you know she's already getting older she's in her 70s so she's climbing up in age right um, she was also born with Pluto in in Leo. Leo. So she's that mm -hmm. generation. It's the later, the later years, but still she has that signature in her chart. Um, so I think this is what she's doing. She's like, this is this is like my legacy, what I leave behind. And I feel like she's opening it up for other people that were kind of undercover and we're not really wanting to come out and embrace our spirituality. I mean. Rachel Lang, which is one of um, the astrologers that I admire so much, she's also she ran for um, local government in California, Ohio. So um, I actually had a premonition that I saw her running for presidency, <laughs> and I don't know if it's gonna come true. But after seeing Marianne Williamson, I mean, I'm like thrilled to see what's going to happen with Rachel Lang because honestly that is some amazing stuff we're having women and not just women spiritual women like come out of the woodwork and like really embrace all of all of them like what they do and really honor like they're they're actually embracing our witch womb wound our collective witch womb because we were, you know, we were, um, as women, we were like, oh, if you're a witch, you're bad. You're, or if you do, you know, or practice herbs or magic, whatever. So we all carry this witch womb, wound, keep on saying womb, wound. And they're actually healing it because they're coming out and they're going into politics, which has mainly been man ran, you know. So they're going into the world of men and honoring who they are. And I mean... All these people use spiritual people. So, um, and, and she's, they say that she is a consultant to Oprah, like a personal consultant to Oprah. Rachel? Um, no. Oh, Marianne? Yes, Marianne. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is a quote from her book. Anger is like the white sugar of activists' energy. It gives adrenaline in the short term, but it is debilitating in the long term. Love is the nutrition of the gods. Ooh. I mean, I, 
I love this quote. Yeah, because it's true. So Mars, right? Anger, anger is Mars. Mars is in it. Mars is like an like activist. Actually, Mars used to rule anarchist um, energy before Uranus came into our collective consciousness. Now it's Uranus. So this is all like tied into the signature of the nation. Mars, Uranus. Anger is like the white sugar of the activist energy. It gives us adrenaline, which is true, but this is all short term because we cannot keep up with that adrenaline. It's not something we can do long term. It's debilitating to us. But what can we do long term? Love, love. And you can see that conjunction of the sun to her moon, just like really talk about love. And she also has a very healthy relationship with Mars because Mars is training all this stuff. And with Uranus. So this really speaks about her core beliefs. You can see that there. Like even this quote. So that's why I chose it. There's a lot of good quotes out of this book. Um, yeah, I'm just like fan. What what what, what am I can Fangirling? Call? Yeah, fangirling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and lastly, um, we just kind of, you know, just to honor the administration that we've had uh thus far. Um, one of the things that I was telling Emma when we were getting ready for, for, um, for, like to do the podcast is, um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get people upset. I hope not. <laughs> Just my opinion. But, you know, other astrologers have been saying, um, oh, you know, look at all these aspects that Kamala's having to her chart, blah, blah, blah. She's going to come into power, blah, 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 blah. And that's not my opinion. My opinion is not that she's going to come into power. Kamala has been secretly in power. I mean, we'll be stupid and naive to like really think that Biden is able to run this administration. I mean, if he cannot keep his act together when he's doing a debate, what makes us think he can do it other times? I mean, that's when you're supposed to be in your best behavior. Right. And he wasn't able to like he's trying. I mean, he's trying to do his best, but it's his health condition that's not allowing him to. Right. She's been secretly in power. And you can see that here with Mars. Look at Mars, M uh, not Mars. Pluto. Pluto, Pluto right on Biden's midheaven. She's been running the show the entire time. He's just been the face. And sadly, he's been the face because America has never had a woman president. And when she was running for presidency, the poll said it over and over. We were not ready for a woman president and definitely not ready for a woman of color to be president. So now it's a little different. But are we still, are we there yet? Are we really there yet? And that's the biggest question. I think that's the biggest question of the election. So we have to look at the feminine energy of the charts and really analyze that. And Mars, I'm telling you, is super strong. We're seeing Mars pop up everywhere. We see Mars and Leo, you know. So this is all not feminine energy. <laughs> uh, I don't know if... If she's going to eventually, you know, have the honor to hold the title of presidency, I have my opinions that I don't see that happening because of the way that the charts are falling. However, she also does have a handful of good placements that we can say, hmm, okay, <laughs> it's a possibility. So, and you can see that possibility by her being endorsed. She's running. She's being endorsed. And I had mentioned this to Emma, that if Biden's running again, it's only because he's holding face while she's the, the one running the show. So for me, she's already been in power. It's just a informality. Um, and it's a facade to the nation. And you can see that too with neptune look at neptune neptune conjunct the nation's mc this is biden's neptune so then we were bamboozled <laughs> right 
as a nation, like, hey, he's the one that's in charge, but no, he's the vice president. Look at the other, the other way around. The the nation's um no sorry, Biden's MC conjunct the nation's Neptune. So a lot of us, I mean, a lot of us are like really like not thinking like, oh, Kamala's been in charge. <laughs> Is it because she's never announced it? But no, she's been in charge. Like, come on, think about it. His health, it's too deteriorated. Like, and we're such a nitpicky country. We pick on people's accents, for God's sake. Like, come on. Like, come on, give me a break that we're not going to be like, what is wrong with that guy? You know, like, what? Like, come on. Like, so... I had my doubts until I saw this chart. I mean, I knew he wasn't the one in charge. I just wasn't convinced. It was Kamala for some reason until I saw this chart earlier today. And yeah, I am 100% convinced after seeing this. And I like how you use the word bamboozle. Me, I had said like we were under a spell. Yeah. (laughs) But bamboozle is (laughs) a nicer way to say it, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah the neptune biden's neptune on the country's mc it's like it's it's an illusion like we we, we were we were watching a movie the whole time and the real person in power the pluto on his mc yeah it's been her and that's where she yeah. had her natal venus her uranus so she did mm-hmm. it in a way that like a lot of people don't feel like she was, but she was the one running the show. She was the one stepping mm-hmm. in. I mean, that's what happens. That's why we have a vice president. When the president is sick or not able to make it, who do you think makes it? The vice president. However, she never officially took the title. Now, you know, I'm hoping his health, he gets better. I know that he had mentioned um, that, you know, he, he had, um, he was sick, but he is older and the possibility of him no longer being with us is like really on the table. I mean, that could happen to anyone, but when we just factor age only, that could be on the table for him sooner than later. Right. And we can't say he's going to live another 20 years. Like it's just not going to happen. So, I mean, he was pretty much just like, assisting that's what it was and he was you know hold maybe maybe at first he was a little bit more involved but as his health started deteriorating I mean I think that was the plan all along that if something was to happen to him she was then going to be promoted to presidency and at that point we wouldn't have any choice like the nation's not going to be like a woman president no you know because she, we voted her into a vice president And now she's stepping into power, but that didn't happen. I mean, Biden kept up with his health, so it didn't happen that way. But you can see the harmonious relationship that, you know, they've had, they had like the, like, like Biden's Saturn right on her ascendant. Yeah, they have really amazing synastry. They have amazing synastry. It's like, you know, and, and their age is very large, their gap. So it's kind of like a father daughter type mm-hmm. of energy. You know, he he's old enough to be her father. Right. So it, it's, it's like he took care of it. Like, you know, I'll be the face. You're running it. Well, okay. Yes. I know some of this. Let's run this together. But in reality, it was her. It's been her. So she's already stepped into power. Now we need to kind of take our blindfold, but there's a lot of, a lot of things going on too with the nation. I mean, the nation itself, we're having a Neptune opposition. We've been having it. It's already separated. Um, But during like 2020, (laughs) it it was, that was the act. And that's when, when this dynamic duel came in, right? So even though it's Neptune now is at 29 degrees and it's a critical degree and that's also very, very um, strong. Like the, it's fine. Like some of the people are finally like, wait a minute, <laughs> like me, 
right? Like, like waking up, waking up of the the dream, or yeah, waking up from the snapping out of, Yeah, so they're snapping out of it. Yeah, exactly. And and you know, and then that Neptune at twenty nine degrees is causing some issues with Biden because Neptune's actually trining his sun and his Venus. That's gonna retro back and forth. I mean, Neptune. I've always said it. Out of all the planets, for me, Neptune is the trickiest. Neptune is technically my ruler, but I don't understand them. I really don't. <laughs> I'm he's like, sneaky. He's sneaky. I mean, I understand him. I know what he stands for, but like, what I'm trying to say is like, right? Why? <laughs> yeah. But why? Don't attack me that way where I think everything's fine and all of a sudden I'm in the middle of the desert and no, I did not get to water. <laughs> like, I thought it was walking towards water. I really saw it, but no, that's how Neptune is. And I rather have like Pluto stuff because Pluto's like straight out. He straight out tells you, I'm going to mess with you. You're not going to like it, but you're going to be a phoenix at the end. You're like, no, please. But he at least tells you. You know what's going on, but Neptune doesn't. Neptune just comes in. You get tricked. They steal your credit cards. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. And after you snap out of it, you're like, what just happened? So that's why for me, Neptune's very, very tricky energy. It's very hard. Yeah. You know? At least with Pluto, you know you'll become a phoenix after. With Neptune, it's like, okay, what? What do I become after? <laughs> I'm still like Don't. I'm still trying to understand what was the purpose of this. You become a victim. <laughs> <laughs> a martyr. Yeah, no, no, no. You could be an artist. <laughs> you could become a spiritual artist. <laughs> I mean, Neptune has her, Neptune has his good qualities. Don't get me wrong. I have I, I love Neptune. I have Neptune conjunct my Jupiter, which are both rulers of Pisces. Um, so I love me some love stories and good music and just fantasy world. I'll 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 take it. But you know the hard qualities of Neptune; those are the hard ones because it really messes with your mind. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 not it hasn't been easy for him. And, you know, now he's, you know, he decided to step step down for that reason. Um, most likely it's Neptune also talks about us needing to let go of all the material, everything that's material. It's it's a planet that impacts our moksha, like how we release from material connection. So, you know, as he's older, it's like it's time to just release, let go, relax. Neptune's relaxing. I mean, what do we do at the beach? Who the fuck works <laughs> at the beach? I mean, people take, I, I'll take some stuff to work, but do I really work? No, I'll start and then I'll just like, I'm closing my laptop. You can't even see with the sun on your screen. Like, you can't, I tried that. You can't. Yeah, see? <laughs> like, I'm, exactly. Like, we try because workaholics do. But then when we're at the beach, we have no choice. Neptune's like, no, the beach is calling you. Just relax. <laughs> and you're like, okay, you close it. Plus the sand gets all over your stuff. And you're like, no. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be hard to take that out. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're like, I'm done. Yeah, it's relaxing time. But again, I, we can just say, you know, thank you for their uh, administration and they they actually made a good duo together. Um, I, I'm just looking forward to see who they announce as their uh, vice president candidates and and see how that goes. And maybe we can do a video on that and bring in, you know, their their synastry. Yes, yeah, synastry. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, these two have really great synastry, like great great synastry. So yeah. Now. Um, highlight of the season um there's a couple of things um just fyi for you guys to kind of keep a lookout and this is for the sun in leo now regulus has shifted from leo to virgo or early degrees of virgo but donald was born at 29 degrees leo so he when he was born regulus the fixed star was right on his ascendant. So um, this is the 
day that I feel that the season, we're going to see that the season has the most like impact, more, most shake around this time. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if by this time we already solidly, solidly know like who's in favor, like all the, all the moving pieces we're seeing now, they're just going to be solidified by the end of the season. And um, it's really, this is really important because first it's touching on one of the candidates second after it goes into Virgo season. Right. So then now we're like going to serious business. Like Virgo is all about working. It's going to, they're going to start working the working class. I mean, like working them, like targeting the working class really, really strongly. But why this chart stood up to stood out for me the most there's a few key things the main one is the sun being on regulus second jupiter's conjunct the mc look at that so this is a jupiter mars conjunction that happened so this happened probably a few days before most well, likely the sun was like at 27 degrees probably when it happened 28 no 20 25 maybe um i forgot the date uh, i didn't write the date down but it's very close to that conjunction but look Ju jupiter right on the mc and we also have saturn the saturn square to jupiter so this is it like jupiter's kind of going into the 18th degree at this point but it's so separating the square but that's also very strong because Saturn's in an angular house, Jupiter's in an angular house, Venus also right on the ascendant, rising. So very important. There's just a lot of planets on the angular houses. And we have Regulus on the 12th house of presidents. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it now. The house um, of presidents. <laughs> yes, the house of presidents. <laughs> And then we also have um, the moon in the eighth house, um, which is, I think, the this time around, we're focusing on our debt. We want new beginnings. The people want to see new changes. And that's all the energy of, of um, Aries. The moon at this point has not yet reached 19 degrees, but sometime during this day, it will. So we'll trigger that eclipse <laughs> again. Yeah. So you, you, I just see a lot of things like around this time, August 28th, 21, 22, 23, 24, you're going to see some activity. We're going to see something going on during this time. Yeah. There's just too much stuff, too many like, like activations for it not to happen. So that's just something you want to take note of. These are just the charts. If you guys want to geek out over them, the charts of the closing election. So we have this chart here. This is the chart of the election at um, right at midnight on 11 six. And this is casted for Washington, D.C. And then I actually placed the Washington chart. And then this over here on the outside, this actually is, let's see. Donald Trump? Mm. That's Donald Trump. Was it Donald Trump? Dang it. I don't want to put Trump's. I think I put Donald Trump's and Camilla's chart. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Donald in the middle and then Kamala's on the outside. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, hold on. Hold on really quick. Let me look at the slides really quick and see if I put it somewhere else. No, I didn't. It's okay. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, I put it in the next slide. There we go. So, um, I mean, you guys can geek out and see. We'll talk about this later when we get closer to it, but I, you can just see there's a lot of things being triggered from both of these charts. I mean, these are the major, I mean, if it comes down to it, I think these are the two people that are, they're going to run against each other, right? So, um, you can already see all this activation and how they're partnering to run against each other. And look at all this Mars energy, dude. Like it's just mm -hmm. Mars. Yeah. And crazy. So every, they're, they're going to put up a nice battle. 
um yeah an, a, a nice battle let's see let's see what happens because with obama's administration we saw that they used a lot of social media and that's how they got new voters and a lot of involvement. So I'm curious to see how we're evolving. Cause I mean, we have, we've since then had way more, have way more technology. I mean, we have AI now that's so easily usable. So I'm wondering what is it that they're going to do? You know, Uranus is also involved here on this side, right? So let's see what's happening with that. But um, this is the chart I wanted to show you that we have the Washington and the, Hawaii chart. So the reason why I, we I wanted to show this one is because this is the closing vote. So this is the last time. And even though Washington DC at midnight is no longer taking votes, Hawaii is still taking votes, which is midnight for Washington DC. So you can see that all the planets are pretty much at the same degree, right? Like they're all at the same degree. The only thing that's changing is the midheaven and the ascendant. And from Hawaii's perspective, the ascendant is Gemini. So at 7 p.m. Hawaii time, it's Gemini energy. And this is that same moment is actually where the ascendant of Washington, D.C. falls in Leo. So we're getting interesting. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So let's see how that plays out because it's actually emphasizing that Jupiter that we keep saying like, oh, Jupiter's falling on Kamala's this and Jupiter's falling on Trump's this. And the reason why I said interesting, it's there. It's Gemini rising and Leo rising. It's both of their rising signs. Yeah. Interesting. So they're the ones that are going to, they're going to uh -huh. be right. Yeah, the, the, it's, it's, that's that. Yeah. So let's see what happens. And I wanted to throw this in there. Those that do not do politics will be done in by politics. So yes, get informed. <laughs> Start doing politics. And then lastly, want to geek out over Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty is big. First, she was a gift from the French. And second, she was born on one of the solar returns of the nation because she was gifted to us on July 4th of 1884. So that's, a, we would take that as the birth, right? That's when, like, like we're adopting a child or that's the day that she was adopted by us because she was gifted to us. Then from there, placed in boxes because she was dismantled so she can be placed in boxes and shipped over. She didn't arrive until June 17 of 1885, which is this chart here. So that's when she migrated. She She's, she's actually an immigrant, Right. So <laughs> she migrated. And then the presidential inauguration for the Statue of Liberty, that didn't happen until October 28th of 1886. So then that's when we officially gave her her citizenship. And her citizenship was given to her in Scorpio season. There was a new moon. The moon was also in Scorpio. And she was born with the moon in Scorpio. Well, it could be in Sagittarius too, because we don't know exactly what time they presented this gift to her. I had to create a noon chart. So she might have a Sagittarius moon. And that would make more sense because we're yeah. a Sagittarius nation. Um, yeah, and it was, it was gifted by a foreign country too. Yes, exactly. So that would make more sense. But again, I just went with noon time because we don't have the exact time um but she's and then look her jupiter in leo right at eight degrees but the reason why i wanted to bring her up is because a lot of this administration is going to be based on immigration issues and she's a sign that the u.s is inviting people from all over the world to come to the U.S. She has um, this um, poem that was written by Emma Lazarus, 
And it says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The, the uh, wrecked re uh, refuse of your uh, teeming shore. Send those, the homeless, the tempest toast to me. We're inviting people that w want to leave their home because they don't feel like that's their home. So they feel homeless and join us. It, it, we're built on immigration. <laughs> And she's also placed in New York City and in like New York, New York, where um, we would have the boats from Europe arrive. And that's where they would check in all the immigrants that were coming from Europe. So she's there inviting the immigrants so we can build the nation. And I think this is something we have to remember. Um, we were immigrants that built this nation. And we'll continue to be immigrants that continue to build this nation. And it's just going to get flavored differently. We had a big, massive amount of people coming from Europe, but now they're coming from all over the place. Like it's not just Europe. So um, she sits with her uh, tablet or book or whatever, and it has the the day the, of, of the independence so she carries that signature. And I think that's really important for us to remember as a nation that we are calling, we are subliminally calling immigrants. She was a gift from an immigrant. She wasn't even created in the US. She's French. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this French Lady Liberty, like doing, you know, she's she she's American now. I mean, she's been here all this time. She was only in France for a little bit because she she, didn't... she probably speaks English like me. <laughs> yeah, with exactly. my accent. <laughs> exactly, exactly like Emma because Emma speaks French. <laughs> yeah, see, we have to like really take this into account. This is like something that our nation is founded on. So either way, geek out over her chart. I already did. It was pretty cool. Um, and then uh, I think that was it. I think that I covered Regulus. Yeah, I did. I covered Regulus on the election day. So we let's are see what not... happens. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens with this. A lot, a lot of Leo activation. I mean, Mars is really it's pro it's promising to be a very um, jam pack packed season for us all the way through the fall so from the summer all the way through the fall we're just gonna have busy 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 energy it's not non-stop especially mars and gemini i mean that's non-stop yeah. then mars goes into cancer and i mean that's gonna push the nation right the people yeah. we're cancer nation so and then from there goes into leo and we yeah. elect our new king or queen for the next four years not necessarily but yes right our presidents are like yeah. the king. we're not a monarch anymore but but still so i hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for joining us and we will catch you next time for the next episode emma and i are also going to be posting little clips of leo season for all the zodiac signs so we'll post those in smaller videos so you can just listen to your sun moon and rising and then have your own little personalized uh season guide for leo season yeah thank you chris this was fun um and we'll see you guys next time. Uh, we haven't decided yet on the next topic, but it's going to be as interesting as this one. Yes, we promise. Well, thank you. Thank you. And you guys stay informed. Bye. Bye.